everybody. Welcome back to the Trash Rats Podcast, the only apolitical podcast on the entire internet. I am your host, Monkey Jones, joined as always by Reactor. Hey, what's up, everyone? And unfortunately, uh, we, with heavy heart, we have to admit to all of you that Rusty Cage is not here tonight, nor will he be back here on any night. We did read the comment section of the previous episode, and the audience was very clear that Rusty was way too obnoxious, way too abrasive with his fellow co-hosts who he claims to be friends with. Uh, he was spewing nonsense out of his ass nonstop, and, and frankly, we were as annoyed and disgusted as all of you were in the comment section, so we made the executive decision to kick Rusty off of the show permanently, and we changed the password of his YouTube channel. Yeah, we, we feel like uh, you guys are only watching this for us anyway, so it's not like we're well, gonna... Well, almost certainly, almost certainly. I mean, could you imagine tuning into any podcast to hear the opinions of Rusty Cage? I think I think there was only one comment saying that they were here for Rusty Cage in the last video, so... That might be the only one in the the history of this show. Yeah. The the, the like one we, time a guy was standing up for Rusty. We didn't even think about it until we saw that comment. We were like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> why is he in yeah, here?" Yeah, hold, hold on. Well, yeah, we're we're the real stars yeah. of this show. We're the big box office draws. We're making like hundreds of thousands of dollars from this podcast and giving him like a third <laughs> of it for what? I really hope he doesn't try to sue us. That would be really awkward and painful. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think he could. Yeah. Well, Reactor, I mean, it's just you and me, so we've got a lot of time to fill. And I thought, hey, for some reason, people last episode, in addition to being disgusted with Rusty's uh, uh, vernacular and behavior, which I, I agree with, people also saw, thought that maybe you and I had m maybe a bit of a rocky relationship. I don't know where they got that from. Did you get the same well, vibe from the comment section? Uh. I don't know, not really. I, I just felt I, like people were, they were confused about whether or not you and me were, were truly BFFs. Yeah, I don't remember that. Uh, I remember you were talking about it, though, because you were talking about how much you hate me on the, on the episode. <laughs> so, and, like, well, I thought, me, hey, so. you know, uh, it, the only way that we can prove that we truly are BFFs is if we take a quiz together to find out if our relationship is going to last. I found this uh, quiz on BuzzFeed, so you know it's going to be scientific and peer-reviewed and all that jazz. It's called How Strong Is Your Relationship? And I thought right. maybe we should uh, take this quiz together and see if we're going to last. What do we do if, uh, if it comes out negative? I think uh, we'll have to compete against each other to see who wants to start a new show with Rusty, and then the third guy is just left out. Maybe he has to go do a show with Amp Lemon about, like, fucking meme reviews or some shit. And doing cigarettes. <laughs> is that going to be a <laughs> yeah. recurring joke now? <laughs> it's not a joke. I think he was dead serious about that. Yeah. It's not a joke to him. So I mean, the first question on this quiz is, how long have you been together? And if I recall, we first met, what, in it, was it 2015? Is, was it that uh, long no, ago? It was January 2016. I remember, okay. I remember I started the channel like uh, the last week of January. So early February, probably probably February 5th if, or, or, or so. Yeah, like, those not, were, not that I try uh, hard to remember exact dates. But. Those were, it, I feel like that was a, a lifetime ago. It's hard to believe that I've... You know, it, back when I first met you, I was living with my parents. I was going to college. It's so weird to think that well, after four years, I've I've moved across the country twice. I've lived in like five, six different places. Our lives have changed so much, and yet the <laughs> one constant is is our uh, relationship to each other. Reactor. Yeah, I agree. So for <laughs> would the answer be two to four years then, if that's one of the slots yeah, on the yeah, quiz? Yeah. Okay. Okay, next question. How often do you see each other? Well, does... Uh, uh, like, see? Like, is it being literal? I assume a conversation counts, and we talk on the show once a week, but we also chat it up on Discord. Does that count? Uh, I don't feel like it, that's what they're referring to, seeing each other. Well, in, in the days of COVID, Reactor, oh, yeah. you really have to, you have to be not so precise with your language. I mean, we, we communicate m once a week. That's more than I assume most married couples even yeah. communicate. Uh, so is that what we're doing uh, every other day? 
Oh, you want to do that? Yeah, every other day is an option. We could do that. Oh, yeah, that, that sounds about right. Okay. When you're apart, do you chat much on social media? Well, oh, that kind of told you. Yeah. Well, hey, what are you gonna do? It's a BuzzFeed quiz. <laughs> you, you know. Uh, yeah, we're chatting on and off most of the time. I think I agree with that. On a scale. <laughs> Uh, okay. On a scale of one to ten, ten being the best, how good is your sex? Like it, it, it did not specify with each uh, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, how good is your sex? Like a nine. Oh wow! No, 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 ten, ten, because I'm a male. Oh shit! The male sex is is ten. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, we are both men, so yeah, we are yeah, the the, best, the sex. best sex of them all. <laughs> uh, which of these best describes your friendship groups? Oh boy, there's, okay, I'm going to read all these paragraphs. We each have our separate friendship groups and prefer to keep it that way. I wouldn't really call their friends my friends too, but we do hang out sometimes. We've become friends with each other's friends, but I probably wouldn't hang out with my partner's friends without them. Most of our friends are shared friends, but also a few people we like to keep a bit more separate, or we've basically merged our friend groups uh, into one big super group. I think the oh, last a, one. Oh, I think the second to last. Second to last? I mean, I Re feel read like... Read it again? The second to last was most of our friends are shared friends, but also a few people we like to keep a bit more... Okay, yeah, that's know. right. Uh, yeah, I mean... Because yeah. I feel like you're not really friends with, like, Biggs, but we're yeah. both friends with, like, Aggie and, and, Rusty. and um, well, we used to be friends with Rusty. Well, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean, though. Yeah, that was the before times, before the... I, would, I wouldn't say he's not my friend anymore. I just don't want him on the show. Uh, no, I'd say he's not my friend. I'd say <laughs> I actively, I, I feel animosity towards him, and I only wish bad things on him and his family. <laughs> and yeah. his family. Would you say your partner is also your best friend? I don't know. I wouldn't say you're my best friend. Oh, well, that, this is going to be awkward then better. because, yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to say, you know, I, I only got so many. And I was, I was going to, if I was going to do a tier list of friends, you were, you were going to be in the I mean, S tier. But I mean, if I'm B tier, that's fine. At least I'm say, on I would say the tier list. I don't know. I mean, is there only one best friend allowed? I don't think so. I mean, yeah, I, think... I wouldn't say you're my like top tier like if my girlfriend breaks up with me i call you crying type best friend you know but but you know that you could and if anything you know i could be your girlfriend tonight mom and dad yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd probably wouldn't know. even i probably wouldn't even talk to you about it like message you in discord like my girlfriend broke up with me guys I'm not yeah. doing the show this week <laughs> is that why rusty didn't show up <laughs> no it's because i told him not to <laughs> so uh Let's just go with a no. You know what? I, I think it's unhealthy for people in a relationship to consider each other best friends. Like, yeah. I don't f I don't fuck my best friends. I'm just going to be honest. I think that's kind of a, a step too far. That might be a bridge we don't want to cross. Well, I mean, like, marriage is kind of, like, supposed to be best friends, right? Mm, I thought marriage was for tax purposes and so <laughs> that the church can control your relationship. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah, it's... It, it, it's so you don't have uh, premarital sex, maybe. Oh, no. Yeah, so we should all get married at what, like 16? <laughs> Is that the plan? If, if you want to, what, bang a 16-year-old? Uh, I, I think the idea was when we were both 16, we can bang one out. How old were you when you lost your virginity reactor, if that's not uh, the, a bridge a too far? Uh, no, I just I want to know. 28. Bullshit. <laughs> uh, 18. Yeah, I was 18, too, my freshman year of college in the dorm room. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it's weird. I could have lost it earlier. I just didn't care. I don't know. It's weird. It creeped me yeah. out. It creeped me out that, that uh, this sounds weird, that uh, women kept asking me, you know? <laughs> no, like, it really but did. I was Starting like, from what well, because, age? Because, like, uh, ever since I was young, I was uh, suspicious of people, maybe. Of like women? People, not women, but, like, people. So, like, when, like, I mean, think about it. Some some chick walks up to you and says, hey, I want to fuck you in this alley right now. What would you do? In I mean, the alley? Well, I mean, I'd fuck her in her alley, but maybe not but I mean, literally maybe, maybe in not, an alley way. Maybe not literally an alley, but I mean, that was just one experience I had. But, like, yeah. it, it's weird. Like, kind of. What, know, what like, state were you in when you got this proposition? Chicago. Okay, yeah, Chicago Alley's probably not the best place to lose your V-card. 
I was suspicious of the offers. Like, why are you, like, are you serious? Are you trying to, like, I don't know. You think they're trying to get knocked up so they can get that, that those I deep know, I, pool I just, pockets? I don't trust they people want to get who your are money? that blunt. I don't know. <laughs> I you don't, you don't trust a, no blunt cunts yeah. for Reactor. Okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, how likely do you think you are to stay together forever? What are the chances that we'll be doing this podcast uh, in the year 2080? Uh, I think we will. Pretty high, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't see why we wouldn't. I mean, now that we've cut off the dead weight, I think the show only propels yeah. forward from here on out. 2080? Damn. Yeah. I'll be pretty 60 old. 60 years be, from like, now? I'll be like 70 years old. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so I'll go with a 10 on that one. When you think about your future, do you factor them into your plans? Well, we kind of j- literally just did that, right? Uh, we j- we just said we're going to podcast together for 60 years. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess. Okay. Uh, oh, no. Have you ever seen them pee or poo? And the, the options are, yeah, we're at that stage, or no, that's gross. I don't think that should be a stage in any relationship. I don't know why this was included. You, you never you never shared a toilet with your girlfriend while she was on your lap? <laughs> I mean, is that is that normal? Am I crazy? Do people actually I mean, pee Chicago and poo in front of other people? In Chicago, we do. We share toilets. Like, I mean, if you're dating them, what's the big deal? Just but, poop, like, you, you take a shit with the door open? No, they sit on your lap and poop between your legs while you poop. <laughs> so it's just, it's like an efficiency thing. You want to get both the yeah, poops done as fast thing. as possible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I, I can see where you, where you would bond from that, I guess. <laughs> uh, I mean, the relationship certainly would be strengthened after, you know, a, a shared experience like you that. on my lap. How could you do this to me? <laughs> What about like a, what do they call it, a blumpkin when uh, you're taking a shit and she gives you a yeah. blowy joey? Yeah, that's so weird. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's, that's... weird? <laughs> I mean, putting your face that's... down there? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. So I'm going to go with no, that's gross. Um, yeah, if there yeah. are any, if anybody in the comment section, and I know you guys are really vocal down there, uh, if any of you have ever... Uh, pissed or shit in front of uh, your significant other, tell us the story in the comments section. I'm, I'm really curious to see how common this is. We're going to put them all together and put them in a book. Oh, yeah, yeah, we could do that. Uh, the, the first the Trash Rats publication, it's just a bunch of screenshots of YouTube comments and we sell it for 22 bucks. Yeah, stories of They've people done that pooping with in front of their girlfriends. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure people on Reddit have made millions just screenshotting Reddit posts and putting them I in think books. they did, didn't they? Yeah. How come you haven't done that? You're like the king of getting rich off of uh, trolling Reddit and taking advantage of them. You should be selling uh, books. Reddit, Reddit's deteriorated over the last four years. Uh, uh, what, know, what's been just, going on for the last four years? It was taken over by bots. Like, I can't outbot the bots. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. It, it's, it's all bots now. Well, shit. Okay. Do you tell each other everything? Yes, of course, pretty much, though I do think it's okay to keep a few secrets, or no, it's important to keep our lives separate to some degree. Uh, I mean, like, anytime you ask me something, I don't, I don't, like, have a reason to lie, but I don't just straight up tell you everything you don't ask, you know? <laughs> yeah, I feel like, especially on this show in particular, there, I feel like I'm a bit of an open book. I don't think there's much that we, we keep secret around here, because at this point, especially for me... I don't. Even, I don't think I have any more secrets to even keep. I, I feel like all my secrets are public knowledge at this point. Uh, I don't know. I don't. Know. I don't even remember if I have secrets. I'm sure I do. <laughs> I just can't think of them. Like, well, like you haven't uh, revealed your middle name yet. Are you going to tell Did us I? your middle name? I never revealed my middle name. Oh, not I that I, I know of. I guess it took me a while to reveal my real name, even. But uh, yeah, it's Michael. Mike. That's my brother's middle name. Whoa. Uh, it's the like, second most common name uh, in the year I was born. I was going to say, it must be a, a thing that, that the younger brother has the middle name Michael, but uh, evidently you're not the younger brother, so I can't even say that. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's funny. I still uh, don't believe you, though. Was it Christopher was uh, the number one name the year I was born, and Michael was the number two name. So your parents are extremely uh, uncreative. <laughs> yeah, it feels like it, but my father's name is Michael, so that's where that came from. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So I guess we'll uh, we'll say pretty much, but we do keep a few secrets 
Maybe. Yeah. yeah. How do we even okay. start talking about my middle name? Uh, how often do you fight? Do you and um, me ever fight? Have we ever fought before? I mean, the last episode. Wait, that was us? I thought that was Rusty and Emp. Uh, I thought we were the level-headed ones and that they just went off their rockers. Well, I mean, we debated. Is that a fight? I don't know. I, yeah, I guess not. I guess it was planned, so no. So we should go with we basically never fight. We prefer to just talk stuff out. Hey, I mean, yeah. we did talk yeah, it, it out. So yeah. is this implying that a fight between a couple should be physical? Because the, the cop out here was we never fight, we talk it out. What kind oh, of relationship yeah, is this quiz for? Oh, shit. It's from BuzzFeed, we expect. That's kind of fucked up. They're just normalizing domestic <laughs> abuse, I guess. Yeah. I don't know how many more questions there are, but I'm just going to keep plowing through. You're watching a TV show together, and you really want to watch the next episode, but they're away. What do you do? Well, if if we were binge-watching, uh, what shows have you you been watching lately? You watch uh, Alex Ryder up on Amazon? I can't, I can't find a show to watch. What, what kind of uh, stuff are you into? I've watched a lot of good stuff lately. Maybe I can recommend you a show. Uh, right now, I'm like really into Q. Have you heard of it? Q? Like uh, QAnon. Uh, the- have you heard of them? Yeah, I've heard of that, no, but I don't I think they have TV shows. No, I, I don't know. I, I haven't been able to find a TV show lately. What, what's my favorite show? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't even know. Yeah, what is your favorite show? Always Sunny, I would I would suppose. Yeah, that's a good one. I have not caught up on the last, like, three seasons. Is it still good? Not really. Oh. Uh, I feel Sad. like the last one I saw was when they all turned black, and then it's like a musical. Yeah, that was a good but that one. That was a while ago. That was a really good one. Uh, uh, what are the rules? What yeah. are the rules? What are the rules? Yeah, good song. So, uh, so if we're watching Always Sunny and I'm out of the out of the house, are you gonna watch the next episode without me? Yes or no? Hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> so would you say watch it and be consumed by guilt, or watch it and then watch it again when I get home and pretend you haven't seen it yet? Exactly. Yeah, that one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do we cook for each other? I'm going to say no. Yeah, that's a no. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, how good are, are you at buying your partner gifts? Have you bought me a gift before? Uh, yeah, I don't think I, so. I, I know. When we were in New I, York, we went to the M&M store and we went to the Nintendo store, and I don't recall you buying me anything. Do reactor hats that I never actually sent to you count? True. Yeah, I did request a reactor hat three years ago, and you, even though you live four still, hours I, away I and shipping it, would be two bucks, you I still have, have not it. sent it. I just haven't sent it. Yeah. I mean, my P.O. box has been public for a long time. You could have just gotten that one yeah, taken no, care of. Really, you know what? I did go to the post office when you requested it, but for some reason the post office was closed. So was it was, Sunday? No, it was like some sort of stupid holiday. It wasn't like a big holiday. It was like some sort of like, oh, it's a like holiday. Like President's Day. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Labor Day. Yeah. So I went to the post office and they were closed and I was like, oh, fuck, I'll go back later. And never went back. So we're probably at like a one for like not very good at buying each other a gift. No, no, no. I did buy it. <laughs> so what, a 10? Yeah. I just didn't give it to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, it, it won't let me change the answer. I already said one. Well. Oh, yeah, whatever. I mean, it's true. I'll admit it. It was uh, one. Can was you... Lying. Can you see yourselves living together in the next couple of years? Well, I know that you're planning on moving probably, what, near Gainesville, where, where yeah. uh, Rusty and Emp live. Is that right? Yeah, I'm going to try looking for houses out there. And then uh, I guess you could move in if you want. I don't know. I don't yeah, care. I mean, hypothetically, in the next couple of years, I could, if you guys were, like, you know, really going ham down in Florida, I could see myself moving into that uh, area. So I guess we yeah. could say... There's a pretty good chance. Yeah, that's a pretty good answer. I guess it would be good if, yeah, if we were all down there, that'd be cool. You're really going to look for a, a whole house to yourself? Yeah. You don't want to, like, move in with Emp and his girlfriend? No, I, I like, I have a house worth of furniture and storage <laughs> I need to get. Oh, shit. And, How much uh, do you pay a month on storage for that all the furniture you're not using? Like 150 or something. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, but do you I, feel I like? House, so. Do you feel like you can totally rely on your partner for support when you need it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think. 
Uh, you know, no, yeah, I, I feel like, uh, you know, if you got evicted tomorrow, you you would definitely have a place on my couch. <laughs> and I, I I wouldn't say vice versa because I don't think I can get and evicted from here. But that, uh, website I made? Did you are you using it? That depression chamber website? Yeah. Yeah, I have not uh, taken the time to edit it yet, but oh, um, yeah. I yeah. For people who don't know, I do a series called the Depression Chamber, where people uh, email me their stories about rejection and you know, heartbreak and battling depression and all these things, the suicidal thoughts. And I thought, hey, maybe I should make a website where I can archive all these stories and people can just read them, and then I can also link to videos of me reading some of them. And uh, I'm I'm pretty stupid when it comes to making websites so i had reactor make it for me and i just haven't taken the time to yeah. actually uh, post the content yet but do you have access and stuff that's what i was wondering i haven't gotten back to you about that since i made it honestly i don't remember i was probably drunk or high when i asked you to make it for me uh, and then it's been right, like whatever. two months yeah it's no I'll, big I'll take deal a look at it and make sure it's all still set up and shit oh here's the good one if you guys had a kid tomorrow how do you think you'd do it looking after it you think we'd be pretty good parents, or do you think it would be uh, an absolute nightmare? Even the idea fills me with terror. I mean, do you want to be a parent? Because if you don't, then I don't. I don't feel like I would want to adopt a child with you. I don't particularly want to be a parent, but if it was thrust upon me, I think <laughs> I could do a pretty good job. Monkey, I, I accidentally adopted a kid. <laughs> yeah, it took five minutes. <laughs> I didn't even know what I was signing. <laughs> Uh, so, well, we'd probably, uh, oh, one option says we'd need a lot of help from our parents. I would definitely <laughs> guilt my parents into buying everything for their grandchild. So if you want to go with that one. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it sounds fine. Yeah. Like, why would we be stuck taking care of our own kid? We should make our parents take care of that shit. I'm just imagining the absurdity of us, of us adopt, adopting a child and we're, you know, we're not in a gay relationship, but then forcing it on our parents, like, our parents would be like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. Hey, YouTubers have done some pretty weird collabs over the years. I think we could do the first collab. You know, two small-time YouTubers adopt a baby and we start, just vlog a, it. Yes, a family vlog. <laughs> yeah, we should. And then we should turn it into Daddy05 where we're, like, pushing the baby down the stairs and shit. Oh, God. That's is that what, what doing? we should Cause the idea is you gotta you gotta abuse the kids enough to where Philip DeFranco puts you on his show and then you're just famous. Then it's you like, got all the clicks you need. But you, you know what I'm imagining happen? Because like you, when you start doing well on YouTube, you get that like uh, what's the word? Not like euphoria, but you're you enjoy it. You know, like oh people like what I'm doing. You know, I don't remember that feeling. But, but then you like chase the algorithm. You know. You know, you know what I, I mean? Like, I would not know. If you look at my channel, it's the opposite saying, of algorithm I, chasing. My, my point is, like, that Daddy05 guy probably started doing really well, and he was like, this is awesome. And then he realized when he does certain things, he gets more views. So he was like, hey, look, when I smacked my kid in the face, everyone tuned in. <laughs> so he just starts going more and, you know, like, you see YouTube channels chasing the he algorithm. He pulls out you know? a fucking pistol and hits his kid in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get those views. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how are those kids doing? Do we have any updates on that story? Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. I've... Did any of them die yet? If not, then what were we complaining about? Probably, I would have had them make a channel if I were him. All right, it's your turn to make a channel. The kids? Yeah. Kids 05? And they can uh, prank the dead. I mean, that wouldn't have been <laughs> as bad, right? If they were pushing the dead down the stairs. Oh, it should be like, yeah, it should be a, a revenge channel where they're just abusing their father. Because then who yeah. can be upset about that? And then they could be the owner so that he doesn't have to be uh, banned. Uh, I bet Philip DeFranco would fucking jerk himself off to a video of those kids like pushing their dad down the stairs. What, was, was he obsessed with the whole thing? Oh, yeah, dude, man. Oh, God. Back when what, I watched really Philip bad? DeFranco, he he was posting videos about it every day. You saw the videos? Like, how bad were they? Were they uh, with the, Phil, the Philip DeFranco videos or the Daddy-O5 videos? Like, the Daddy-O5 videos? Because both were bad. Oh, the Daddy-O5 videos, though. Was it like uh, actually she, you watch and you're like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Uh, I mean, I, I think he was like telling his kids to slap each other and stuff. <laughs> but, you know, kids do that anyway. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I'm yeah. not like a big Daddy 05 supporter and I never went to his channel. Yeah, but yeah, me neither. I'm, I'm sure well, it's just YouTube shit getting overblown like everything else is. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine if he was breaking laws, um, we, we don't need Philip DeFranco to intervene. Like the police could probably go take care of that pretty quick. 
since he's posting it online, and I, I'm pretty sure that's what happened anyway. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sucks. He was pretty big to lose it. Uh, do you think of yourselves as a team? Yes or yes. no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, we're the I mean, podcast not like, team. Not not a, a team at all times. Like, if I if I go do something, I'm not going to be like, Mumpke, let's go. You know, but... But know. we are on the Trash Rats team. Yeah, so, yeah, that's that's where I see that as true. Well, that was the final question. It's a gang, actually. We should make a Trash Rats as a gang, not a not a team, all right? Uh, so what do our view like, what do we call our viewers if they become gang members? I mean, yeah, they would be gang members. Join our Patreon, oh. become a gang member. Well, like, do we call them the Trashies, or do, do we call them the Rats? Uh, No, they're Trash. Trash Rats is just the name of everyone who's in the gang. Okay, so if you yeah. want to become a trash I mean, rat, go to the Patreon. We're we're the, the leaders of the gang, but and they have to do everything we say, but they're still trash rats. Okay, yeah, I can get on board with that. Uh, I I especially like that they have to obey us. Yeah, it, it's in my culture to be in a gang because I'm from Chicago, and I haven't been in one, oh, okay. in one in a long time, so I actually like the idea. Okay, yeah, okay. If you want to join the trash rats gang, you know how to do it. And yeah, that was the final question. We we got a relationship score out of one hundred. Would you would you like to guess oh, yeah, what yeah, our I score was? I think we did really well, like eighties. Is that going to be your your locked in answer, like eighty? Uh, I would say eighty five because I'm thinking like it's in the eighties probably. Okay, well you were close. We got a score of seventy seven out nice. of one hundred. That is a very solid C. Oh, we passed. It definitely, dude. C's get degrees. We did it. <laughs> Our relationship is going to last, according oh, to BuzzFeed. Yeah. Are there actually uh, alpha or like like alphabet grading systems on this? Well, 77% is a C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was just wondering if like BuzzFeed is like, you got a C. Uh, they said you guys are a pretty good couple, and while you might not have been together for ages, let. Okay, he had a typo. He said let instead of yet. Uh, and aren't necessarily certain you're going to spend the rest of your lives together. You're the sort of couple people look at and think, I want what they have. Well, Aww. that's that's certainly true. I, I think a lot of people want what we have. <laughs> All this trash rights money. Yeah, and, and, we, 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 we get, <laughs> yeah. Hey, and we give dividends to gang members, just so everyone knows. If you want to join, it could be very lucrative. No, wait, that's a lie. I don't want to... No, I, I think I it's fair to say after we after we make a net profit of one million dollars, we will give each gang member uh, a proceed of uh, the proceeds. Yeah, some sort of dividend. Yeah, we'll give them like one percent of yeah. all yeah. income. Once we get one million a month from Patreon, we're gonna we're gonna begin our plan to give dividends. So definitely, yeah, I think I can get on board with that. Well, well, shit, dude. I, I did not expect that BuzzFeed quiz to take half an hour, but here we are. <laughs> what else do we have this week? I, so I want to show you this this uh, news article. Um, okay. It's, uh, let's see, it's about Pope Francis. I don't know if you heard of this guy. He's like a cult leader from Italy, I believe. Yeah, right. I'm working on a video right now, and I don't know if this will be out before or after the podcast, but it's about, uh, you know, my history of humanity videos. Uh, it's okay if you don't watch them. They're whatever, but it's about the invention of God, and one of the messages of the video is that uh, p throughout history, there have been people who pretend that they can speak directly to God, and I personally think that they're the scum of the earth. Oh, wait, and I, I, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I just uh, I think Pope Francis might fall into that category if he pretends that he can actually you know directly communicate with God. I mean, how, how do you know if he can't? You can't I just you can't prove a I negative. Just, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just assume that all religions are equally real, and therefore anybody who pretends well, no. to talk to God is a scumbag. Well, well you can't confuse a man-made religion with all religion because there are real religions. There like which religions, ones? Uh, I don't know. I. I it's been a while since I read about Buddhism, but isn't Buddhism, uh, I guess they do have a little bit of uh, superstition stuff, but but like my religion, for example, my religion is 100% real. What do you believe in? I believe that uh, the that what people refer to as God is actually the laws of the universe or energy, but energy is bound by the laws of the universe, but energy creates everything. It creates everything in the universe. It's what created life. It's what created our solar system it's everything 
So, so like that, science? That's 100% true. So you're a Scientologist. I'm a science sanity. San- oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, you have a link to that on your Twitter, don't yeah. you? Yeah. I think I donated twenty dollars to that. Oh yeah, for the website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't you say you were gonna put me like in your Bible or some shit? What do I get for donating? Uh, I haven't started on writing the Bible yet, but. Oh. Uh, we'll get on that. Donating, That'll be our next book just, after uh, we sell the Reddit book. You just get to be part of my, uh, my religion, and also. We're doing a deal right now so that anyone who joins the religion by going to science-anity.org, I believe it's org, or it's com, one of those things, I don't remember. But if you go there now and donate $20 to prove that you trust me uh, 100%, we're going to make you a lieutenant in the cult, I mean the religion. Wait, so so you're running a gang and a religion now? Yeah, I like to, you know, stick my tentacles everywhere I can. I'm and now that we're adopting a kid, how are you going to find the time to do all these different things? I figured you were going to stay home. Well, yeah, but still, you got to run a cult and a gang and raise a child. That seems like a lot to juggle for one man. You can you can be in charge of the gang, and then I'll be in charge of it. And it's <laughs> okay, not a cult, good. it's a religion. I misspoke. Well, what's the difference? It's totally different. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not lying. No. Yeah, but what, what did Pope, oh, yeah. Pope Francis the liar say? Oh yeah, totally forgot about the article, huh? Oh, but anyway, he's afraid of uh, robots turning against us, and he says we should pray that robots don't turn against us. Uh, he he, uh, he urged Catholics to pray that artificial intelligence and robots always serve mankind, and we need to keep them that way. You know, <laughs> sort of sort of like uh, what Pope uh, Reginald said in uh, 1850 about the uh, the Civil War. About robots in the Civil no, he, War? He, he was talking about the other things that should always serve mankind. <laughs> Wait, no, uh, what did he say? No, I'm just making that up. But, I'm, oh, I, wouldn't, I, would, but I wouldn't doubt. It. No, no, no. But I wouldn't doubt the Catholic Church 200 years ago supported slavery. You think so? I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, I mean, whether or not you would doubt it, you know, I don't know if it's super relevant to whether if they I mean, did it or well, not. When did Italy outlaw slavery? Did they ever have slaves in Italy? I didn't know that they had it black wasn't, people wasn't over there. Or was Spartacus in Greece? <laughs> like they, or no, no, no. The Colosseum, they fought slaves. Didn't oh, they? I thought slaves were only if you're a minority. I didn't think. I, I thought white people were just indentured servants. No, what ended up happening with uh, the history of slavery is that it was all people, but uh, as we got within the last four hundred years, it turned into. Uh, it, it was less common, and then uh, eventually uh, it was only black and, black people and uh, white and Europeans who were slaves. And then uh, we freed the slaves in America, and then like 70 years later, the, the Europeans were freed from uh, the Middle East. Oh, shit. I yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this. So I'm just... <laughs> But anyway, no, yeah. I think it's an so, important history lesson. I mean, I'm so, I'm doing history research, you know, one era at a time, and I'm still in 3000 BC. So I'm excited to hear about what happened in Europe yeah. 70 so years that, ago. That Europeans were most recently slaves. And really, yeah. if you think about it, any any person who lives under a monarchy is kind of a slave anyway. Yeah, or uh, living under a communist. Uh, government that's been taken yeah, over by china so definitely uh-huh. yeah you hear about that fucking hong kong shit that kind of pissed me off wait what, what was it they hong kong's the number one free country in the world I no they the, the 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 chinese government like ousted all of the like the democratic uh, politicians in hong kong or some shit them? like they they were all forced to resign and, and now hong them. kong is is undoubtedly part of china by force or some you, you shit know what's funny in 2016 you remember uh, the Donald on Reddit? Yeah, is that not there anymore? Yeah, they, they banned it like a year ago. Uh, What'd they ban some, it for? Uh, supporting Donald Trump, obviously. <laughs> like, I mean, there's still like a Trump subreddit, right? Uh, the, no, no. Trump is banned from Reddit. There's a conservative subreddit, which is similar like to what it used to be, except it's like less uh, Pepe. Oh, I, I could have sworn there was an r slash Trump, but I guess uh, I only go to r slash politics no, well, to get I mean, all my opinions if you uh, know what I'm know. saying. <laughs> I actually don't know. But what's funny is in 2016, in 2016, there was uh, this subreddit called the Donald. And uh, 
when Trump. I, I, man, I remember specifically, man. Yeah. I was I I was in there browsing threads. It was a pretty fun well, it's, place. It's called it's called the Donald dot win now they got banned and they made their own uh subreddit free of everything so it's is like, it like a it's an own independent website or is yeah. it still on reddit no it, it's it's as if you were on a subreddit but it's the whole it's an independent website so and they stole the code you know what's funny about this I, I know i'm sidetracking but uh right now we're in the middle of that uh communist coup so they're like the whole new communist week, coup yeah, the, on november 3rd like the media has been lying for a while but on November third, they went totally black, and there's there's nothing real on the internet right now coming from like the mainstream media. They're like gaslighting the shit out of everyone. Like it was a it was a real election. Nobody paid attention to these ballots that were dumped in at the end. Like you didn't see anything. Ignore it. And uh, oh, yeah. that reminds me of uh, uh, if you have a second, I want to do a, a little bit called uh, Guess the Punchline, where I wrote a joke and I want you to guess what the punchline is. Do you want to do it real quick? No, let, let me just finish real quick because okay, I, yeah, I, that's I, fine. I like, it, it's relevant, okay. but, but anyway, yeah, continue. So my point is, my point is, what you were saying about Hong, Hong Kong with them uh, taking down the elected leaders or whatever and replacing them, the same thing happened on the Donald in like October of 2016. All of the mods were suddenly removed and new mods were added by Reddit, which was suspicious as fuck. And, yeah, and I mean, I, I would not China. doubt that the Reddit admins are full of scumbags and like control freaks. I remember like. Back then, like or like maybe 2014, 2015, that was the big news. Like China invested in Reddit. Like, yeah, okay, no wonder it's a hellhole. Yeah, didn't they buy like 30% of it or some shit? I don't remember. I just know China owns it, so what the fuck? <laughs> it, it really changed after that too, if you think about it. Well, yeah, evidently that, now that it's all bots. Moment, now that you think about it. Well, hey, uh, speaking of yeah, yeah, go for, go for election up? results, I'm going to I'm gonna give you the setup. You tell me what the punchline is. Okay. What do election year reactor and white supremacist Scooby Doo have in common? Uh, uh, what was the first part about me? What do election year reactor and white supremacist Scooby Doo have in common? Uh, I have no idea. They both hate riggers. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good, good right? That's yeah. not a bad joke. What does uh, what do uh, voting machines and uh, Hunter Biden have in common? Uh, they both fell asleep doing coke. They both give ten percent to the big guy. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you have to like follow the news to know what that that was. But no, like that's that pretty good. I I got it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that's the only joke <laughs> I prepared for this episode. So you're gonna have to you're gonna have to fill up the rest of the jokes. <laughs> Knock knock, and I just start telling jokes for. An hour. <laughs> yeah, it starts telling like uh, like oh, a no, no, laffy no. so, taffy so joke. There is something. Uh, the only reason I'm here actually is I wanted to uh, make an announcement about uh, the current state of U.S. politics. I want to. Oh, let... we don't want to make fun of the Pope anymore. Oh, I mean, we could, but. Uh, I mean, so he's scared I, that I, robots I wanna... are. What, what does he think robots are gonna do? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like what, like. What robots does he know? I don't know any robots. Do uh, yeah, is he like friends with Rosie the robot from the Jetsons? Like, did she threaten <laughs> she's acting, him? She's acting suspicious. Is he upset that robots are so intelligent that they know God isn't real? Uh, well, actually, wouldn't we be the God of robots? <laughs> it's starting off, maybe. Oh, and then they become our gods. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's how it goes. Thing. Well, yeah. Before I get into the whole uh, announcement, so it's funny because. Uh, once we create artificial intelligence that's in, as intelligent as a human, that means it will be smart enough to invent itself because we were smart enough to invent it. And if it's smart enough to invent itself, it's smart enough to upgrade itself because we're obviously smart enough to upgrade it. And uh, so if, if this AI keeps making itself more intelligent, it will be on an infinite path of exponential intelligence. I, there, the, the Futurama episode where Bender goes on that addiction spree of uh, power, you ever see that? When he becomes God and he's floating yeah, in yeah, space. Yeah. I, I feel like that that's a legitimate scenario. Uh, well, I, I think a, a more apt uh, comparison would be Avengers Age of Ultron, where they make Ultron and he's the smartest computer and he makes more robots. And then the only way to stop it is to, I guess, make a, a cyborg that is kind-hearted to fight the evil <laughs> robot. We it just sounds, have to make an AI that is kind. Yeah. So, okay, okay let's, to this announcement, it's huge. Okay. This is okay. like this is the the biggest news you can you can get from anywhere, and you're getting it here. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist, I swear. My no, body is ready. Now, you you go ahead and decide. So anyway, the 2020 election 
was a sting set up by Donald Trump against the sting- Democrats. St- okay. Uh, his, his whole Democrats election- specifically or like any any particular person that he's trying to frame or what? Uh, no, no, no. Just anyone who – any corrupt – there's there's a – you know that there are elites who run the world, right? Well, like George Soros and stuff? Yeah, but, but his name – like they've actually – successfully made it so that if you talk about him you're a conspiracy theorist and and you're automatically wrong which oh, is soros yeah but, but um, I, e- even yeah, after the last that. episode even i know that george soros is corrupt as fuck yeah so the voting machines uh so anyway in 20 september 2018 uh donald trump signed an executive order that means it like this is something that he purposely made right an executive order that said in the event of foreign election interference uh, he has the ability to tell his secretary of state to investigate it and tell the secretary of treasury to freeze the account of anyone who is remotely connected to anyone who interfered in our election illegally. So that means if uh, if I was involved and you sent me 10 bucks, your uh, finances will be frozen at this moment. But when you, know you say I mean? foreign interference, doesn't that mean a, like somebody in a different country? Yes. So if our voting machines were bought from Canada, would that be foreign owned, a foreign company interfering? It would. Right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So as it is right now, uh, the machines are from Canada. And is that what all this Dominion shit is about? Because I have yeah, no idea yeah. what that yeah, means. Dominion is from Canada and it's, it, there's, it's like known to have it, – it, it's a voting machine – that has features no one would ever want on a voting machine. Like if you put a ballot in it, uh, it can it can check the boxes for you while it's reading it. Fucking insane shit that like, wh- wait, what? <laughs> Why? Like uh, that that skit from The Simpsons a few years ago where Homer's trying to vote for Obama, but it keeps casting the vote for McCain. Oh, that that's interesting because it was actually doing, uh, it was taking Romney votes and giving them to Obama in 2012. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, so so the election, uh, everyone, like, the thing is, everyone knows our elections are rigged. There's something suspicious about them, right? Or at least until 2016 when I was hey, All I know is that you and Scooby-Doo both hate riggers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the point is, so uh, he made this executive order that said if, if he suspects that there's foreign interference, he can uh, quietly, without, he doesn't have to announce that he's doing this, just start an investigation and... Uh, Anyone who's involved. So it's funny because say Canada's involved. Any finances connected to the, to the USA that the USA can freeze, they can take all of that. If China's involved and they have investments in the United States, it's all void, right? Uh, if Bill Gates is involved, if the IMF is involved, and so all this stuff, and you think about who these elites are, they're basically the war machine that uh, creates wars, and then the IMF comes in and says, hey, we'll loan you money to fix up your war torn country and it's just a it's a scam it's an evil scam and uh it sounds crazy to say that that's real but it's kind of like everyone knows in the back of their head that there is something like that going on right but so so hypothetically if if the trump administration thinks that somebody was involved in election interference they can just uh authoritatively freeze their bank accounts hand of god like you ever see uh those attacks in the video game where you shoot lightning at one person and anyone near him gets chain lightninged. Yeah. I mean, it's like don't that. you think that's a little bit of, uh, you know, the government overstepping its, uh, you know, bounds? How, how do you, do you, so if, if a foreign government bought half of the politicians in our country, what's our defense? Oh, well, we elected them. Nope. I don't give a fuck. Right, but if I'm an innocent man and I'm being wrongfully accused of something, I don't think it's fair that the president can say, hey, we're going to freeze your bank account. Well, well, they're going to investigate. They're going to freeze it and then investigate more. You know, like if you're – I I think that's a little bit dangerous. You could say, oh, I think you're my enemy. I'm going to take all your money away. I think allowing corrupt politicians to run our government is even more dangerous. Well, I mean, you have to stop it. You can't. You don't have a choice. It's like, oh, I'd rather well, I not have a dies. choice between you know the lesser of but two evils. I think two the, evil things are so, both bad. So the interesting thing, interesting thing about this though is that, uh, in the case of suspected foreign election interference, it becomes a national emergency. And I don't know the law about if Trump has to declare that it's a nas- uh, we're in a national emergency or not. It might. You know, he doesn't have to tell us anything. You know, if they see aliens coming to Earth, they're not. They don't have. You, we know damn well they won't tell us. 
So I think he quietly uh, activated this investigation, and the November uh, 3rd election was a sting. Okay. It It was meant to set up the people, like they were watching it all happen. And then... So Trump is kind of like the Joker in The Dark Knight where getting caught was a part of his plan. Well, he getting caught He he wanted to lose so that he could expose the enemy. No, no, no. Well, he didn't want to lose. The idea is that Trump got 80 million votes. Biden got 65 million. But because the machines are rigged, and it sounds crazy to say that if you haven't looked into it, but download the actual uh, timeline data, uh, like second by second. It's all on the internet. It's hard to find. It's not super easy because there's the media blackout shit. But if you find it, you can look at it and you can see that uh, at one point you'll see 30,000 votes disappear from Trump and appear on Biden. And this Mm. happened a lot. So I know for a fact this happened from all of these machines. All the machines were rigged. And also keep in mind, uh, Democrats were trying to do all kinds of weird, crazy shit to get rid of Trump, right? So in a last-ditch effort... I would not put it past him to have rigged the election. This all actually is real. This isn't conspiracy. The, right. I mean, the, the assumption. Just, I'm just going to, if I can just, yeah, you're the only person who I speak to who holds these opinions. So if I could just like give you a few easy volleys, uh, yeah, yeah, you, we'll see if you can volley him back. If, if everybody, you know, if this conspiracy is real and, and Trump really did win the election, uh, why did the Democrats not rig it so that they would also win the Senate? Because right now they're losing See, the Senate. Okay, so look, so what, what happened is the Democrats, uh, there's a couple things that kind of point to how they did this. The, uh, first of all, there's a video of Biden saying he put together the biggest voter fraud organization in American history, which is crazy because— is, Wait, is that what he said word for word? Yes, he said, we put together the biggest voter fraud organization in American politics. Or and it, you, it and, like and how exactly are we interpreting that statement? I, that he, he everyone, he's just admitting everyone, on ca- ev- he's admitting on camera that he cheated. Everyone's interpreting it that there's no way he would admit on camera that he he cheated. So he it must have been another blunder. But it's like how or like maybe he made like a committee of people to investigate voter fraud and not that he's that, actually that, what, enacting and, it. And that, that's what they're all saying. Like no, he misspoke. He meant a voter fraud organization to stop fraud. But my question is, why didn't he make one of those then either? Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, that's a perfect ex- explanation. If he had made one of those, if he made an organization to fight fraud, like, yeah, you know? I mean, but maybe but, that's uh, what he w- was saying. Uh, but w- w- was that your question? What was your question? So if they rigged it so that Biden would win, why didn't they oh, yeah. rig it okay. so that all the Dems so, would win the Senate? So what happened is uh, one of the ways that they rigged it with the voting machine to give uh, 10% of all Trump votes to Biden, they... They uh, they looked at the mail-in ballots to decide how much in person would would happen. They were trying to like you know guess or whatever. And uh, oh man, um, so <laughs> shit. They I, one of the things they did was they opened up the ballots beforehand and to see like how many votes and what which was illegal. Uh, they're not supposed to open them until the third, but also they did this. And what happened was they didn't cheat enough. There was a humongous, the, the biggest red wave, because Americans don't want yeah, communism. They don't want to be silent. They well, want their YouTube channels deleted. We're sick of this. Yeah. You think that Joe Biden's the party of communism, though? 100%. He's okay. definitely, he's 100% connected. Like, we already know he's connected to China with through his son getting uh, million-dollar loans with with uh, no no need to pay them back. Uh, but so, so, so we know that he is connected like that. What was I saying before? You're trying to explain why they didn't cheat the Senate. Oh, yeah. So they didn't cheat enough, cause, but they thought they had. They were like, if we set the machines to give 10% to Biden, we win. But they were su- surprised by this uh, huge red wave. And uh, I, I guessing, I estimate that Trump got 80 million real votes that before they were altered and messed with. Right, but why, why didn't they just make it so yeah. 10% so, of the votes go to the Democratic uh, Senate they candidate? Did. No, they did. They did. And it just wasn't enough? But it wasn't enough. And what happened is, if you watch the the timeline of uh, votes coming in, you can see when uh, all five of the Democrat uh, kingdoms, cities, strongholds, whatever you call them, uh, re- they realized at the same time, like, fuck, we didn't cheat enough. Trump, Trump is getting more votes than we cheated for. 
And uh, that's when they were like, oh, no, uh, a water main broke in Georgia. we got to stop counting. And there's no report of a plumber or anything going there. No one was called. There was no wa- broken water pipe unless they fixed it right there on the spot. Right, but Georgia hasn't done their Senate vote yet, right? Isn't that coming up in a special that, that, Georgia that, that, election? That's like the special election. I, I didn't really look into like what all that is. But it is an important yeah. election because it decides if the Republicans or the Democrats uh, control Everything. Well, I don't. I don't think but, Democrats but, have a chance for control. I think their best case scenario is fifty-fifty. But I, then I guess Kamala but, would be in charge of breaking the ties. Yeah, maybe. But what happened is when they realized they didn't have enough, that's when they started wheelbarrowing uh, Joe Biden ballots in through the back door. And there's affidavits from witnesses. The media says they're fake. I don't know. I mean, I know they're real. I've seen videos of it and stuff. But it's like we're up against this disinformation uh, campaign from, you know, whoever is doing this shit. Uh, so they, they wheeled all these in, and when you have to make 100,000 Joe Biden votes, you know, ASAP, you can't waste time checking the other candidates. And that's why Joe Biden got 450,000 ballots that only marked his name and nothing else, which is extremely unheard of. You know, some people— Yeah, it probably really would have helped if those, those 40,000 or 400, whatever number you said, it probably would help if those people also voted— for the Senate and not just yeah. for president. So that right there is the reason why they lost everything. But it yeah. also is a very suspicious reason that they lost everything. We didn't lose any House seats from the GOP. But supposedly Joe Biden got record number of of votes. The problem well, don't you is, think it's likely so that Joe Biden is such a moderate, middle-of-the-road, boring Democrat that maybe some conservative-leading people would rather vote for him than Trump just based on some of Trump's rhetoric and performance? Uh, Trump's – everything that Joe Biden said he was going to do in, the, in his campaign was either bullshit and he said he was going to do uh, one thing and the opposite thing. Like, I'm going to follow the Green New Deal. No, I'm not following the Green New Deal. It's crazy they do this so that – when you hear him say what you want, that you stop looking. Like, oh, he did say he's going to follow the Green New Deal. I'm going to vote for him. Meanwhile, the other guy's like, oh, he said he's not going to vote for the Green New Deal. I'm going to vote for him. You know, it's it's fucking creepy, corrupt shit. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I, but, I just uh, think but, but, in this election, maybe a lot more moderate and, and middle of the road people just thought, hey, Trump's kind of a, a jackass. I guess I'll give it to Biden because he's, he's, he's probably not, not going to well, do anything. Is, like, I hate having to like, keep saying this but if you actually look into what trump's doing he's he's actually saving us from this uh this uh depressed uh, victimhood uh everyone is racist uh atmosphere and, and that's that's bad for your health you know he, he's like people are trying like something is up something is definitely up i think it's a uh some court, some sort of like socialist communist uh coup you know if you rig the election it's a coup. You're a regime. Yeah, but, uh, but at, at the same time, uh, Trump has had a lot of lawsuits, and most of the judges were judges that he and his administration appointed. And uh, these judges even said, sorry, you lost. We're not well, we, siding with you. Uh, on the election uh, thing? Yeah, like most of these, the judges have already said, no, fuck off, Trump. You're stupid. Yeah, so, so that's part of this uh, conspiracy theory. It, but those are his judges that he appointed. Yeah. So shouldn't they be on his side? So so part of it is, what is it? You, you ever hear you keep your enemies closer? So you think he appointed judges that hate him on purpose? If this conspiracy theory is true, and this was all 4D chess, I mean, but the thing is, like, I know that it's a conspiracy theory, but the problem is, why did he make this bill in 2018 that gives him the power to, uh, to it gives him superpowers during... Uh, foreign election interference and we know for a fact it just happened this is very odd and then you have all of trump's lawyers going on tv interviews saying yeah uh just don't worry trump 100 percent is going to win Pe- joe biden's going to be in jail this is what they're saying this is lynn wood joe trump's biden's going to be in jail what did he lynn do wood uh trump's lawyer said uh this was all uh like i, I don't want to say that they've said that this was all a setup but what they've been saying is, uh, don't have any doubt, don't don't worry, don't freak out. Trump is going to win 100, percent and Joe Biden's going to go in prison with a lot of other for, with a lot of other people. Uh, and then he said, uh, when when the truth comes out, even Democrats won't be able to deny the amount of corruption that was involved. 
So, you know, you take this conspiracy theory, but then you listen to Trump's lawyers saying, like, it sounds like they're trying to pacify the Trump supporters, like saying, don't freak out, don't become, don't join Antifa just because you think <laughs> they stole the election. And, and if you look, Trump supporters are all calm, basically. I mean, I'm trying to follow it as close as I can, and it's hard, but we're not, like, freaking out, crying with our pussy hats on, you know? But, yeah, but it's I'm, just a, it's just I'm waiting to see so sounds, on... Well, I, I'm waiting for Inauguration Day to see how much violence the Trump supporters really have under their belt. Maybe they'll surprise everybody well, and they'll just peacefully the, allow it to happen. But I, I suspect a lot of uh, bad things happening. Oh, well, I, I can tell you right now that uh, if Biden does become president. Um, I will make two hundred dollars. Yeah, no, but I'm saying uh, it's it, it. There's no doubt in my mind. They can't gaslight me enough to think that those were legitimate ballots that were wheelbarrowed in and that all of the the votes going from trump to to biden was because they act i don't know what they act it was a a glitch oh okay we'll fix it and then we win or don't fix it and then you stole the election like but uh, yeah i'll definitely uh if biden if, if america is going to be taken over by a communist regime and it sounds crazy to say <laughs> i know but that's literally what's happening they rigged the election i, I now, don't think joe biden's a communist you don't he, he no. denounced militias. He has tweets saying, we need to, like, how dare they form a militia against my riots? Like, so How do you define communism specifically? Uh, communism is, it's like an authoritarian control. Uh, everyone has nothing except for the, the party that gets to live in capitalism. It, basically, it's China. China has a, a capitalist society and a communist society, and the capitalist rules the, the communists. You know, so it's like an oligarchy. It's like a slave plantation. And so, if Biden becomes president, who are the slaves going to be? You and me. Yep. And okay. yeah, it sounds crazy, but it's like, okay, well then, why is he like? Because look at his whole campaign. It was all fake. It was all bullshit. He was talking to nobody. Nobody was showing up. And Trump brings fifty-seven thousand people to a Pennsylvania rally, and then Biden wins. Real weird. Biden vows to well, destroy the U.S. I economy think and lock everyone I down. If I can just speak to the rally numbers, I think it's because Biden, like the Biden supporters were more of the, hey, BLM. let's social distance and stay home. And the Trump no. supporters are more like, well, hey, no. fuck COVID, we're going to go in, BLM did in have public. Numbers. So, no, it's not that they were like, it's, it's that they didn't vote for, if anything, they didn't vote for Biden. They voted against Trump because Biden's uh, regime t convinced them to. The, all the media, like it's fucking creepy how, how gaslighting the media is, the mainstream media, even Fox on November 3rd, Fox News became uh, liberal. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, the one thing I'm looking forward to in terms of media uh, destruction will be when Biden becomes president and Trump launches his, you know, Trump TV. And when <laughs> oh, I see yeah, like when he steals all like the best anchors from Fox and Fox's numbers go through the toilet, I think that's going to be beautiful. I personally, I'm not going to watch Trump TV, but I hope it's very successful and that everybody else suffers because of it. Did you hear that? Uh, what is it? Uh, AT and T is selling CNN now. To who? Anyone who wants it. Fifteen million, I think. Uh, it's Fifteen a, million it, or, for or CNN. Billion, billion, billion. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, it, what's funny about <laughs> it is, why would they be selling it right now? Because, well, I guess they're fifteen billion in debt. But, but also, what's the value of CNN after election day? Zero. If Trump's not, if Trump's not in office, well, I mean, what are you going to talk about? How great Biden is. Yeah, it's like How much the Daily that, Show. The whole time Obama was president, the Daily Show was boring as fuck because they had nothing to talk about. Well, even with Trump, it was boring as fuck because they they just say stupid shit. Like, well, at like, least like dissecting a stupid Trump tweet can be a little bit funny. But like yeah. when when you're a news network and the the party you agree with is in power and you're trying yeah. to like make jokes, like what are you supposed to joke about? Uh, the uh, others. Like, what is it? Colbert's still talking shit about Republicans. Like, uh, look, they're having... Well, that's because Trump's been in charge for a while, so that's why he can do that. But, like, when Biden's president, I think all these late-night sh talk show hosts are just going to run out of material immediately. Yeah, yeah. They better hope Trump wins. <laughs> but th that's why CNN's being sold, because it's, like, it's worthless. Well, there's well, it sounds no like Trump anymore. should buy it and just that turn CNN hilarious. to the, the Trump News Network. That'd be awesome. Real. Yeah, it would. TNN. But, but, but there's more to this. Uh, what was it? Um, so, so yeah, so this, 
the, the, the theory is that this is all just a setup because Trump was tweeting about the elections rigged, foreign foreign interference, blah, blah, like in the summer. And uh, and he already had this executive order active, so he could already have the power. And then uh, supposedly the way this bill or the order works, it's it freezes assets of anyone remotely uh, connected. So think about it. if this is true, it just sounds really cool because that means everything gets uh, like CNN belongs to the U.S. government, then Facebook Twitter, Google will belong to the U.S. government because they're all uh, complicit in treason. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't see like, that happening, but if it did, I guess it would be you know, pretty entertaining. funny? Uh, before we started the show, I posted a, a video of the Federal Election Commissioner doing an interview saying, I, I, we do believe that there was fraud involved in this election. The Federal Election Commissioner. Facebook deleted it and said, this is a warning. Because I was posting yeah. fake news. Like, dude, I'm posting the fucking dude who's in charge of elections. If he wants to say that he's a, uh, he's Big Bird, then how the fuck do you <laughs> fact check that? Maybe he is. It's like, how, how do you Ma- fact check the guy who makes the rules? How do you fact check Big Bird? You just don't. Yeah, I don't know. That's a poor example. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. Obvi- it got obviously the point not across. Big Bird. But yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, uh... So if I post the video again, I'm going to get my uh, Facebook banned, which is fucking hilarious. Like, Well, f- honestly, at this point, I'm surprised you're even on Facebook. You should have deleted that shit years oh, no, ago. No. To be totally honest, like, I, I was actually editing the video to tweak it, like, deep fry it a little bit so I could post it again. Because if they, wanted, if they catch it again and delete my Facebook, then, you know, it's whatever, man. What value do you get out of having a Facebook account in 2020? Uh, well, w- once my Twitter... Uh, was deleted i kind of started posting on there a little bit more but not like the as crazy as i would on twitter because like people, <laughs> people who know me can see these posts but uh you don't think people on twitter know you well i mean like, i mean people who know me in real life like ah, okay. people i went to high school with i don't want to put like uh you know it's it, it's a sting donald trump set it all up but that, but yeah but going back to that but if you actually you believe it, why not warn no, no, your what, what Facebook do you friends? Why do you think this exec- executive order exists? Do you think it's a coincidence that he's just not using it? Uh, why do I think Donald Trump gave himself the power to attack just, people who try to stop him from winning? No. Yeah, I don't know. Or, or who, who try to cheat in U.S. elections. Uh, it's why a real head it? scratcher. Why, it seems like he's not using it. But I don't know. There's just a couple things that it would be cool if it was real. And... Uh, there was a server, there was a raid in Germany yesterday where they took, a, I think the company was called Seidel. And this, this is part of the story. So this uh, server business that was funded by Bill Gates and Microsoft and among, and like Google and Facebook and stuff like that, uh, they, the U.S. Army uh, cooperated with German officials to raid the facility and they took uh, the computers. The... I heard two different things. One is that there was uh, blue leaks, which is like uh, documents. It's like kind of like WikiLeaks, but there were two hundred police de- U.S. police departments that had their uh, files on the on this computer. On a and, German on a, computer? Yeah, on a server. And the other thing I heard was that the election results were on the server. So this, this rumor goes and says that uh, the voting machines were transmitting our voting data out to Germany or Spain it was like there, there's something there's companies in these two countries uh, Germany I think I think it was Spain they were transmitting the data to though I don't remember but uh, they were altering it there and that's why when you watch uh, the CNN live election night you can see live you can see Trump losing votes and then Biden gaining the exact same number like like even if that's not election fraud Watching the numbers change perfectly the same amount from Trump to Biden, shouldn't that be investigated? <laughs> like, yeah, if, I mean, if that's true, it should be. It, uh, I you don't know. See those videos? I don't know if I've seen videos of Trump's votes literally going down oh, and being yeah, replaced show, with Biden votes. I could show you, and maybe right now we can throw. Uh, should we put that in the, in a video? Hey, it's bad, you're it's editing bad the talking. podcast, dude. You can put it in whatever no, you I'm, want. I'm just saying because uh, we might get deleted by Google if we. Because you're really not allowed to talk about this stuff. 
That, but uh, I think, dude, I think man, I, I'm not gonna be, work. I'm not gonna kowtow to what the the Google wants me to fucking say, man. Yeah, if you want to put it in the video, put whatever you want in. I don't care. Yeah, I'll, I'll put that in here. Uh, probably while I'm talking right now, you can see uh, the the video. And if you look in the beginning of when the video starts, look at the number of votes that uh, Trump has in Pennsylvania, and then the the lower third. Uh, uh, information ticks over to different states and then it comes back to Pennsylvania and you see uh, that Biden has now caught up to Trump by gaining the exact same number of votes that Trump lost. Very suspicious. And they're telling us that there's no fraud. You know, you're like maybe there's a kid in the back, uh, you know, typing in the numbers as fast as he gets them, you know, and he's messing up. But OK, well, it should still be investigated because that's fucking crazy. Yeah, my, my attitude is still, um, sure, investigate whatever you want. You just have to prove it in a court of law. And I'm, I think my attitude on that will never change. So even if you're right, yeah. they, just, uh -huh. they just have to tell it to the judge. But that's the other thing. So I also feel like we're in uh, one of two state or situations right now. One is that the judicial system is corrupt and we're fucked. This is the end. Yeah, but is, Trump appointed most of these judges, so they better not be that corrupt against him. Otherwise, he kind of fucked up and had to, well, you know, misjudge them when he was appointing them to these courts. So right now, Trump's also uh, replacing a lot of his uh, administration. You've heard of that? Like the Secretary of State and the Secretary of Treasury? Were, yeah, he's were, freaking out because he's got two months left yeah. and he needs people who will be loyalists when he tries to have a military uh -huh. coup against the, you know, the election so, results. So that's probably the, the media spin. But like I said, we know that the election was hacked i've seen the numbers and you can even see it live because they're fucking stupid and they were doing it live but uh yeah whatever man <laughs> yeah i mean we've gone for over an hour so we can wrap this up i mean i i feel like uh you know if you have any other uh i, I don't know uh, big fish that you want to fry uh, oh now would be thanks, the time to, to everyone who joined uh patreon this week oh, did, did we got some new people after the last episode i thought we would be broke uh, I think we got like five more. Oh shit! Did they ask any questions? Didn't really see much. Oh, you can make well, up a question uh, for us to answer. Baron responded. He said he abides to the after show. Yeah, I don't think there's any questions. Let me check the inbox also, though. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, well, shit. So, uh. Hey, every week, folks, we want to answer patron-submitted questions live on air. So if you're already a patron and you're not asking questions, throw anything out there. You want to know what Rusty's favorite kind of porn is? Well, he can't answer because he's kicked off the show. You want to know what color Reactor's underwear is today? Ask it. It doesn't matter. We just want to answer your shit. I'm, I'm actually going to talk about that in the after show. If anyone's interested, just go to Patreon. Wait, and We're uh, going to do an after show today? Yeah. Oh, okay. And we're going to talk about my underwear. So if you're cool. wondering what color it is, you better head on over and join our Patreon or you'll never know. I bet you're curious. So should we wrap this up and move yeah. on to the after show for the patrons then? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, everybody. If you enjoyed uh, the Mumkey and Reactor show, hey, maybe uh, follow us on Twitter. We all know Reactor oh. needs to catch back up. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, let me, let me put that out there. My, my Twitter name is at not Chris Poole, N-O-T-C-H-R-I-S-P-O-O-L, because my Twitter was recently deleted. I'm, it's like really sad every time I tweet. I don't know if I want to tweet anymore if no one's going to listen. <laughs> and you can follow me uh, at Simeon Jimmy. And uh, if you're not subscribed to me on YouTube, I don't even know why you're listening to this podcast. So, hey, uh, okay. thanks for tuning in. And yeah. thanks, we guys. will see you patrons in the after show. There is nothing the political establishment will not do. No lie that they won't tell to hold their prestige and power at your expense. And that's what's been happening. The Washington establishment and the financial and media corporations that fund it exist for only one reason, to protect and enrich itself. The establishment has trillions of dollars at stake in this election. As an example, just one single trade deal they'd like to pass involves trillions of dollars controlled by many countries, corporations, and lobbyists. For those who control the levers of power in Washington 
and for the global special interest. They partner with these people that don't have your good in mind. Our campaign represents a true existential threat like they haven't seen before. This is not simply another four-year election. This is a crossroads in the history of our civilization that will determine whether or not we, the people, reclaim control over our government. The political establishment that is trying to stop us is the same group responsible for our disastrous trade deals, massive illegal immigration, and economic and foreign policies that have bled our country dry. For them, it's war. And for them, nothing at all is out of bounds. This is a struggle for the survival of our nation, believe me. This election will determine whether we're a free nation or whether we have only the illusion of democracy, but are in fact controlled by a small handful of global special interests rigging the system, and our system is rigged. This is reality. You know it, they know it, I know it, and pretty much the whole world knows it. The establishment and their media enablers will control over this nation through means that are very well known. Anyone who challenges their control is deemed a sexist, a racist, a xenophobe, and morally deformed. They will attack you. They will slander you. They will seek to destroy your career and your family. They will seek to destroy everything about you, including your reputation. They will lie, 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 and then again, they will do worse than that. They will do whatever is necessary. The Clintons are criminals, remember that, they're criminals. Our great civilization, here in America and across the civilized world, has come upon a moment of reckoning. We've seen it in the United Kingdom, where they voted to liberate themselves from global government and global trade deals and global immigration deals that have destroyed their sovereignty and have destroyed many of those nations. But the central base of world political power is right here in America. And it is our corrupt political establishment that is the greatest power behind the efforts at radical globalization and the disenfranchisement of working people. Their financial resources are virtually unlimited. Their political resources are unlimited. Their media resources are unmatched. And most importantly, the depths of their immorality is absolutely unlimited.